What's going on YouTube? It's your boy, the Great Messiah Sizzle, back for another video. And this is going to be a review of the Color Purple movie that just came out recently. So, um, I seen, like, the trailer on YouTube here and there. And I wasn't really thinking about watching it, because, you know, a lot of times when they make remakes of stuff, of classic movies, it's always bad most of the time. You know, when they try to remake something. But, um, to be honest... Uh, they shocked me with this movie. Um, I say it was really good. You know, I'll I'll give this like a nine out of, nine out of ten. This was a good movie, man. Um, they had uh Fantasia play as Seely. Um, I haven't seen Fantasia in a long ass time, and she still looked good. Like that, it, it looked like she hasn't aged at all. She has not aged at all. And then towards towards the end of the movie, um. I think they kind of like edited like wrinkles on her eyes, you know, like the crow's feet. Like, I think that was edited because, you know, just to show that it's been a long time that's passed, you know, but yo, she, she still looked good, man. That is a crazy dog. You know, I'm pretty sure she has makeup and stuff on, but I don't know. But just like, cause the last time I seen Fantasia, I seen her, um, when she made her own movie talking about her life and shit, how she got pregnant and how she got sexually assaulted and stuff like that. And it was just talking about her, you know, her come up and all of that. And she played herself in that movie, like a 50 Cent play, Get Rich, Die Trying. She pretty much played herself in that movie. That was years ago. I was like a little kid when I seen that movie. I'm grown man, she still, she like I said, she still looks good. Like, I, like I, you know, I know she has on makeup and stuff, but... I don't know, it like, shit, like, they say black don't crack, man, there's no way that you still look the same, and the last time I seen you, I was like, what, eight or ten years old, and it's over a decade, you still look the same, that is crazy, you know, I want to see how she look like without makeup, though, because I know she probably does have makeup in that movie, I'm, I'm finna look it up right now, that is just off the charts, man, hold up, Fantasia, Twenty twenty three with out makeup. I don't think I don't, there's not any pictures of her without makeup, but in that damn movie, man, she still look good, man. I don't know. It's crazy. Um they had Holly Bailey play as her sister. You know, the sister, um, and they had Whoopi Goldberg. She was the, the original Sealy, and she was like like uh, one of the n n nannies in the movie, you know? So she was, she was the original <sighs> Sealy, but she was like, they had her play <clears throat> one of the uh, nurses or mammies or in the movie or whatever, and... Um, you feel me? Um, what was I finna say next? Um, you know, um, and they had Taraji P. Henson play that little girl. Well, not little girl, but, you know, that girl that was singing at the damn tavern or whatever. And, uh, you know, they had a pretty good lineup of people. Everybody play, did a good job playing their assigned characters. Um, you know, uh, overall, man, I thought it was a good movie. And this is like a musical. I was like, wait, I was like, wait this is a musical? Um, it was good, man. Like, the songs were good. My, my only critique with the movie, there, there, was, there was a little bit too much singing. A little bit too much. But... Overall, it was still good, man. The songs were good. Um, they played the parts of the character good. Um, I also thought it was fucked up because, like, okay, you had you had C. Lee and uh, the sister, right? And I guess um, their mom died or whatever, and uh, she dated like a new man, and like, like their stepdad was like their caretaker, and stepdad made him work at that shop. And all of that. And, you know, the stepdad was sleeping with the daughters and stuff. And he got Seely pregnant like two two or three times. And then uh, 
And then every time she got pregnant and had the kid, he, he would take the baby away and say, I'm going to give him to God now. And I thought, oh, shit, is he killing the babies? What the fuck? What you mean, give him to God? That's what it sounded like to me. But she didn't. But when, when he said that, she was thinking like, oh, you know, you know, like she didn't think that he was going to harm the baby. She was thinking, oh, OK, he's going to give him to God or whatever. And then um, I think eventually she questioned. She's like, oh, if if he's giving the babies to God, why don't God why don't God bring them back or some shit? So I thought he was killing the babies, but he really wasn't. Um, he did, I, I guess he just like put them in like an orphanage or some shit because he didn't want to take care of them. Because, you know, it's crazy, man. That's why, you know, I, I need to get a visectomy, man, because I don't want to have to worry about because like. I mean, it was still fucked up that he was sleeping with, you know, his stepkids and shit. I mean, yeah, they ain't his biological kids, but nigga. Basically, Celie and the, and the girl, they were like little girls still, kind of. They were like st- girls in school still. It's like, nigga, you being the stepdad, y'all ass shouldn't be fucking these girls, man. Well, he wasn't trying to... He was only fucking Celie. And then um, I think eventually he tried to fuck the other one, but then the other one's like, nah, I ain't going for that. She left and ran away. Um, But it's like, nah, nigga. Like, like if I, if I'm a stepdad, bro, I'm not finna fuck my stepkids. That's just nasty. Like, nigga, I took the role of stepdaddy, nigga. That, at that point, nigga, these are my kids, bro. Like, if I chose to play that role, I can't be sleep with my stepkids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's biological kids, not incest, but it's still weird. So he should, that was weird as hell. I mean, they, they pretty much played the movie, um, like the old movie, but they, but, but they added their own little twist to it. Their own, some of their own, like they made some scenes differently, but it was still the same context. They just kind of made it, kind of remade it. <laughs> some of the scenes they took out was, um, uh, some of the scenes that they took out was, uh, <laughs> when they, when the fucking, when, when, when Mr. Kid, oh, let me talk about Mr. So, yeah, man, the fucking debt, the fucking, uh, Paul dude, he fucking, um, Cause you know back then, you know like the like the father would offer his da- daughter to a man in marriage and shit. I ain't like that shit. You can't offer like you, a, a person should be able to make their own decision on if they want to marry somebody. You can't say, "Oh, let me offer my daughter's hand to you" or some shit. Cause like some nigga asked to marry, uh, like the girl, like the guy asked to marry the sister, but the the the, the dad. The stepdad was like, nah, you can't have her. You can have Silly. He was like, I don't want Silly. I want the other girl. <laughs> and then he said, fuck it. I'll just take Silly. And then he took Silly and shit. And then as soon as he brought her back to the house, he said, all right, start cleaning and get dinner ready. Soon as she walked in, she didn't even get a chance to even, you know, set up her stuff, you know, take a tour around the house, you know, just... <laughs> Relax for the first day. Nope. You can't. As soon as you get in this bitch, start cleaning. Get, make make dinner. Need that done at this time. So she made dinner and shit, and, and she cleaned the whole house up. And then he came back and he came home and said, "Why these kids? Why these kids have a bath?" And she said, "Oh, uh, you know, I was gonna do that later." And, she, and then she he smacked her right in the fucking face, and made her bleed and shit. That was fucked up. Mister is a piece of shit in the movie. I, even the old movie Mister was a piece of shit. <laughs> right, a piece of shit. Cause you know what? Back then, women got treated like shit. You know, it's crazy. It smacked the shit out of her and shit. Like nigga, how the fuck she gonna wash the kids? You said the whole house dirty as fuck. And then you said cook dinner. You gonna slap her in the face? That was fucked up. Um, yeah, Mister the piece of shit. Um, yeah, but okay. So the stepdad tried to sleep with the other little sister. She ran away with Sidley. She asked Mister, "Hey, can I stay here?" Mister was like, yeah, you can stay here, but you gotta, but you gotta pull your weight around the house. You gotta help. You gotta help clean up and all that shit. She said, sure, because she wanted to be with her sister and shit. And I already knew this was gonna be a bad idea because Mister wanted her originally, so I already knew he he was gonna try to sleep with her and shit. So she was staying there for a few days or whatever, and then Mister got drunk, tried to fuck her, and she said, no, nigga, get the fuck off me. And then Mister kicked her ass out when it was raining and shit. Got a gun and was like trying to shoot her and stuff, or, well, he wasn't trying, he was trying to scare her with the gun, he was, like, blasting shots in the air, blasting shots close to her, trying to make her afraid and shit like that, and they, they, they did remove the, 
they did remove the, the iconic scene where, where she said, why? Why? <laughs> they uh, took that scene out of there. Um, yeah, they, they uh, took that scene out. Um. Yeah, they, they, they took the scene out. Um, but yeah, man, silly. She was just with this abusive ass man her entire life, basically. You know, since she was like a little girl. <laughs> like, if I was to guess how old she was at the start of the movie, she probably was like 16, 17. And then towards the end of the movie, she she was like fucking her 30s and shit. She made this nigga a big part of her damn life. <laughs> you know? Um,. But yeah, um, she dealt with that, um, and her sister said, "Hey, you know, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm leaving, but I'm, I'm gonna try to write you. I'm gonna write you letters every day and shit." And she was writing him letters, writing her letters, but Mister kept taking the letters because she didn't want Silly to receive the letters. He kept, he, he kept uh, taking all of them and shit, and. Um, you know, um, you know, we get to the part where sister, uh, mistress, mis- mistress, well, not, yeah, <laughs> mistress or whatever, she comes by and mistress, mister, and them are fucking around and shit. Her name is, I think, Sugar or some shit like that. And silly, I noticed that she has a little bit of Stockholm Syndrome. You know, she has a little bit of Stockholm Syndrome because she she been with this guy her whole life and even though he's abusive she's still kind of used to the abuse because when she seen mister and her fucking around she got she 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 started mean mugging she was like she, you know she had like a mean mug on her face and I'm like why are you mean mugging and that kind of implied that she was jealous because she has a bit of Stockholm syndrome because even though he's an abusive nigga that's all she known for a big part of her life. That's all that she's known. So, you know, she has that Stockholm syndrome, you know, because we have Stockholm. Like, I feel like a lot of us has a certain degree of Stockholm syndrome. Even myself, I have a, a little bit of Stockholm syndrome towards my family a little bit, but I'm conscious of it. And, and like, I'm tr- I'm trying to fight that shit off because sometimes it, sometimes it comes back a little bit and I'm trying to fight that Stockholm syndrome off. <laughs> Wasn't nothing as bad as silly. You know, I'm not saying, you know, but, I, but I have a little bit of that Stockholm shit, <laughs> but, um, yeah, man. Um, you know, it's overall a really good movie and shit, man. Um, shit. Harpo, he dated that girl, that that girl that said, "I'll kill him dead if a man was hit me." You know that that she 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 played a good job in the movie. You know she was pretty funny in the movie and stuff. I'll kill him dead if I let a man hit me. Shit like that. That was funny. Um, it's crazy because like um, color purple makes this movie mainly mainly focused on like the black motherfuckers. You barely saw any white people in this movie, even though this is set in like a racist ass time. Um, you did see that white lady who said, "Hey, your 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 children are well behaved. Why don't you come be my maid?" And he was she was saying that to Harpo's ex wife, and it's crazy because Harpo and his wife got a divorce, and they got with different people, but like they still low key loved each other and shit. So like even though they got remarried and shit, they still loved each other on the low. <laughs> so yeah, like they was just fronting, but like they still low key loved each other. They just was just having like a you know bad time. At, you know, they have like a toxic relationship. The movie was fun. There, 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 was, there was some funny scenes. Like I said, Harpo's wife, the big black lady, she was funny as hell. Um, there's a few. There, there was one scene where they got freaky as fuck in that damn tavern. They, they got. I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like. I'm like, is this movie PG thirteen or rated R? And they was fucking. They was like, cause the girls was like, was like they were dancing, cause like you know, it, like it's a musical, so they're singing a song and shit, and the girls grinding on the nigga and shit. I'm like, damn nigga, is this a is this movie PG thirteen or rated R? You know, but uh, what what I finna say? Yeah, that the fucking white lady, she told uh Harpo's, hey okay, and by the way, like this 
fucking shit is kind of like I'm I'm kind of rambling but but like if you seen color purple you would know what scenes I'm talking about <laughs> besides like the musical shit but um you know remember when um yeah the white lady told that girl hey uh I want you to be my nanny be my maid and the girl like nah I'm good and he said she said she said hey I told you, I want you to be my maid and shit. And she said, hell no. <laughs> and then the white motherfucker, like, he, white people said, yo, what'd you say to her? And she said, hell no. And then, and then they tried to beat her ass and shit because she was talking disrespectful to that white lady. But, uh, man, shit, fuck that. Man, fuck that bitch. Man, I ain't trying to be no one's fucking nanny. Fuck out of here. I'm going to fucking take care of your fucking kids. I got my own kids because she had her own kids to take care of. She, she ain't trying to take care of someone else's damn kids. Raise your own motherfucking kids, man. That's how I was back there, you know. What certain certain white motherfuckers want the black want the black maid to take care of the kids while they do their own shit while they go out and do whatever. And the black, you know, the black maid cleaning, cooking, raising the kids while these niggas doing not doing like while these niggas are just doing whatever. I guess they are, you know, supplying supplying the financial shit to the kids. But they're not actively like raising their children. They're just providing the money, but the nanny's raising them and shit. And then she's like, hell no, I ain't trying to be your motherfucking kid. I mean, be your motherfucking maid and shit. So she got locked up because like she disrespected a white lady and shit. She got locked up. And then the only way she was able to get out was that white lady came to the prison and said, hey, I'll fucking bond you out if you be my maid. And then she said, fuck, she, she had no choice, either stay in jail or fucking, um, I'll bond your ass out and you fucking clean my fucking house and raise my kids, bitch. And I'm like, that's fucked up. So she had no choice. And in the original Color Purple movie, um, that scene was sad because I remember like the, the cop, like one of the cops or somebody hit, hit her with a fucking baton or a bat and, she, and it fucked her face up a little bit. And that was kind of sad. But in this movie, she, like, she had, like, a, a red eye. So you can, like, she got whacked in the eye or some shit like that. I think, no, I think in the in, in the original Cup of movie, she got whacked in the eye so hard that it made her blind. But this one, she wasn't blind in this one. She just got whacked in the eye. You know, that was, I didn't like that shit, you know, in the, in the original one. That shit was fucked up. How you gonna whack somebody in the face with a in the eye with a baton because they don't want to be some because they said hell no the fuck yeah she got the right to say that it's fucking different it's fucking stupid man <laughs> racism and shit so you gonna all these niggas fighting this white woman I mean fighting this black woman it's a fucking woman too that's why you shouldn't have kids in this world because there's racist people here <laughs> especially especially back then. I don't know why black people's having kids. This is racist motherfuckers out there. It's fucked up. So, um, um, yeah, man. But overall, bro, it's a good movie and shit, man. Um, shit. Uh, what else? Um, at towards the end of the movie, which I, I, this, this shit. There, there's definitely like some tear jerker parts in the movie. I didn't cry or nothing, but some of the people around me was crying. See, even my little cousin was there, and you know, he started crying at the movie and shit, man. But like, you know, like there's a part where after all these years, it's probably been over twenty years, and like, fuck, wait, wait, wait. okay, no, 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 okay. So, Misters. Sugar, like she's like a sugar is like a singer, you know. She she kind of goes around America singing and shit, and she 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 stays with Silly for a little while, you know, just to I don't know I don't know just to sing in the in the local area and shit, you know, build up her fame, you know, her fan base and all that. Cause this is before days of internet, so nigga, if your ass didn't tr constantly. Keep traveling around. People is going to forget about your ass. And she and she said in the movie, she said, yo, you know, I got to keep moving because if I don't keep, if I don't, um, if I don't, you know, uh, keep showing my face, people will forget about me. Because this, this before the age of internet, streaming, all of that, TV, nigga, your ass had to 
perform at places and sing live at all. That's the only time people can hear you is if you sing live. There was no video or YouTube they can listen to, right? So she was just touring and she 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 had stopped by at the house for for like a little while and her and Celie became cool. Um, I think that was a girl who told Silly, you show sure is ugly. But in the movie, I think they cut that part out. You know, you show sure is ugly. <laughs> right? That, yeah, yeah, I think that was her. But they became pretty cool friends in the movie and shit, even though she was fucking Celie's husband. <laughs> Which Celie didn't like him, but she had she had that Stockholm syndrome a little bit where she hated him, but she still had like some love for him a little bit. That Stockholm shit. <laughs> Um, man, they became cool and shit, and then eventually she was gonna leave, and Celia's like, "Don't leave." She said, "You know, I have to. You know, I, you know, I gotta keep touring and shit like that." But she said, "Hey, next time I come back, I'm a, I'm gonna take you with me, and, and you can live with me." And she, you know, that was kind of sad because Mister, you can tell in the movie, he he was treating Silly a little bit better because that girl was Celia's friend, so. Mister was was kind of like a simp for Sugar, even though he's an abusive man. Sugar was just a pretty woman that he found super attractive, and she just had like this presence about her. And he said, "Okay, I, you know, okay, if if she, if she don't if she doesn't want me to, you know, hit silly, I'm not gonna do it because I'm just a sucker for this beautiful woman and shit." And like I said, Charlie P. Henson played her job in um, Color Purple. Um, Charlie P. Henson, like, like, she was bad as fucking Baby Boy. And do you remember that sex scene in Baby Boy? When I think I, I think they got in an argument. No, he's like, oh, I want you, I want, I want you to make me them tacos. <laughs> Bro, Baby Boy is such a classic movie. Yeah, Charlie P. Henson was bad as fuck. That's probably when she looked her best. And she was like, she was like, she was just like a little girl in the hood, and that she was, she was just like, you know, a little girl in the hood, like a baby mama, you know, like a hood baby mama and shit. But she, she, she was loyal though, you know, she was loyal. You feel me? So, shit. Only thing about her that I wouldn't like was that is that damn mouth. But she was bad as fuck, bro. Yeah, yeah, she was fine as fucking baby boy, boy, god damn. But. Yeah, uh, yeah, she she uh, played her job pretty well in this movie, and uh, yeah, but anyways, towards the end of the movie, bro, um, she, she came back, took Silly with her, and like I said, Silly was like the maid around the house. You know, she she did all the housework. And when she left, that that nigga, like I don't know, she, like she said some shit like. Oh, everything, everything that you do is going to be cursed and all of that shit. And he was uh, struggling. Like he tried to go work the harvest and the harvest got fucked up and his life was crumbling after she left. I mean, I don't know. Like, I guess God put a curse on him or something. Something happened. I don't know. Silly cursed him or whatever. But ever since she left, his life started crumbling. And then um, eventually she came back to the town because she had moved to Memphis with um with sugar and shit and uh she stayed with them for a while but then she came back because i guess her her real father had opened up a shop um you know and she could work there and take over the business cuz that was where she used to work when, when her stepdad was like the owner but really he wasn't supposed to be the owner it was supposed to be her so um yeah, so she came back to the shop, took over the business to make some money for herself. And then Mr. came back and now he trying he acting all nice. How you doing, silly? You looking you, you looking mad purdy right now, you know, because he fucking needs her. Yeah, he beats her, treats her like shit, but he needs her. You know, he fucking needs her to fucking needs her around. So he trying to be all nice and shit, and now she's she, now she, she's a business owner, so she got a little bit. I'm I'm pretty sure she's still like poor though, but I'm pretty sure she's still poor, but she's not dirt poor to where you know she needs to deal with that shit and live with a nigga like that. So now she's a little bit more independent, and that's just how people in this world treat you, you know. And I already said this in previous videos: when you need them, they treat you a lot different versus when you're independent. 
When you need a motherfucker, they're going to treat you like shit. But when you got your own shit going on, that's when they're they, they going to respect you more. That's just how it is. So that's what he was doing. You know, oh, hey, you looking mad pretty, silly. And hey, yo, maybe we should go out sometime. She said, nah, we should just be friends. I'm like, you shouldn't have even said be friends. You should have said, nigga, fuck off. She, but she said, nah, let's just be friends. I'm like, be friends? I was just saying, get the fuck out of my damn store. Well, nah. I will let him buy something. Shit, you got to get money, but get the fuck out of my... Man, fuck you, man. I don't know. I, nah, fuck that. But, um... What else, bro? Fucking, um... Towards the end of the movie, Mr... He actually did something good. Like, I guess he kind of, like... They had, like, a like a dinner towards the end of the movie. And Mr... Somehow was able to contact Silly's sister and invite her to the dinner. And they met after like probably been 25, 30 years. And that was very, a lot of people was crying at that part. That part, shit, almost, that part was making my eyes water. I ain't cry though. You know, I was, trying, I, you know, I was fucking, cause I'm, you know, cause I'm a real street nigga. So I ain't shed no tear. But that shit definitely was like a tearjerker right there. A lot of people was crying at that shit. You know, like you you haven't seen like your best friend and, and like so, and I don't even know if they were even biological sisters, but they haven't seen each other in fucking years, like the 25, 30 fucking years, man. Because this, like this before, nigga, ain't no fucking FaceTime, Skype, you know, fucking video call, none of that shit, nigga. Only, nigga, only time, only time you can see a motherfucker is in person. That's the only time you can see a person. If you're not there in person, you ain't gonna see that person, bro. You got to be right there in person to see them. You gotta be right there in person, bro. That's the only time you can see a person if you with them in person. And they finally see each other, and that was a tearjerker. And then she brought, and then dad, his her sister found her kids. Dad, the dad that that the stepdad would put in orphanages and shit like that. Got the kids, and they finally seen their mother for the first time. And um, the sister. She, she was like traveling the world and shit, and I guess she raised raised those kids in Africa because they they sounded like a fucking Wakandan. Hello, mother. We love you, mother. And <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? And yeah, so like the kids was was being raised in Africa and shit, and it was just a wholesome moment. I mean, I guess Mister changed his ways and she forgave him and shit, and everybody became cool at the end. And I, and I, and I thought that was really wholesome. I don't know if I would have forgave Mister. Because I don't know if I, I can forgive a motherfucker that abuses me for 25 fucking years. But, you know, in the movie, hey, she was able to do it. And I'm pretty sure, you know, because, like, you can forgive somebody, but, but you're not going to forget what the fuck they did. So I'm pretty sure she'll never forget. But she forgave them. They were cool in the movie. You know, I guess Mr. had a fucking redemption. And that was kind of wholesome, even though I wouldn't. I, I would have said, hey, man, thank you for bringing my sister back. But still, fuck you. I would say, hey, bro, I appreciate that, you know? I would have said that, hey, man, yo, I appreciate that, bro. I respect that, but, nigga, nah, we can't be cool, though. But thank you, though. But nah, nigga. <laughs> that, that's what I would have fucking did. So I would have said, nah, nigga, nah. You know? But uh, but still, they, 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 they forgave each other, and it was a wholesome movie. That, that was kind of like a wholesome moment and shit. And I don't know, it was a good movie, man. Good movie. Definitely a solid 9 out of 10. Was not expecting this to be good. It was good. Good movie, man. So, that's all I got to say I'm out.